Content editing in Framer has just arrived and it is so incredibly easy to use. And this is gonna drastically change the game on how I'm able to hand off websites to my clients. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know about content editing, how to set up your files, how to get ready to hand them off and how simple it actually is to use. Let's dive in. You can see I have a couple of different Framer projects open here, some websites I've delivered for clients. And in the past, I would have had to spend a lot of time locking down, preparing this project to make sure that my client doesn't come in here and mess things up. We don't want them to come in and have access to things and drag them around by accident, break their website, and then come back to me saying, uh-oh, what have I done? If they want to make simple content updates, there's already a lot of great ways that you can go about it. You can definitely use Framer's robust CMS to come in here and set up multiple different collections, allowing them to update their content that way. You can also lock down the site and create complex components. So you can see in this website project here, if the user wanted to come into the Framer workspace, click on this hero section, everything has been dialed down into a nice component so they can update the different elements. But that still requires them to come into the Framer workspace, into the artboard view, and that may not be what they actually want. Instead, what we can do now is publish our websites to the actual staging domain or live domain. And as long as our clients are signed into their Framer account on the web, they'll now have access to this awesome new edit content button that discreetly hides over on the right hand side. By clicking this, your website is now opened into editing mode. You'll see in the top left hand corner in the browser, it actually tells us we are editing the page. What does that mean? It means that I can actually click on things and I can add data inside of it or change the content here. When I change the content here, you'll notice it's changed it back over here inside of the actual framework workspace. So now my clients, all they have to do is go in and update the content here a little bit. They can do things like click on images, update the images and have full kind of capabilities on what those images will be. Selecting an image, positioning type, alt text for those images. They can change the labels to buttons. They can change all sorts of things just by scrolling down. Even when I have complex elements here like these bento cards, they can actually click inside of them because they're not images. They're built inside of Framer as real code. So they can come in and click and edit any of these elements. When they're done, when they're ready, all they have to do is press finish editing down here at the bottom and that site has been published. It's been updated. They don't need to go back into Framer and press publish. It's published here. It's published right now. And that is amazing. Now, likewise, if you have set up your site to work with more complex components that have different component overrides inside of them, well, when I come over to this published website, you'll see when I go ahead and open up content editing, I can click on this entire component and it's gonna give me access to all of those component overrides. So if you have something that's a little bit more complex, like maybe a complex hero design or a carousel, or maybe even a bento grid, you can turn those into components and the editing experience for your clients is going to be incredibly easy. So why don't we go ahead and update a few things about this site. We want to say uh, decode your vibe in moments instead of seconds that go ahead and it, it updates our content there, which is super cool. Let's come down here. We have another complex component. So instead of see how it works, let's say uh, features is a better way to say that that's been updated. Fantastic. Now we can come into any of these other sections like this one, because all of these are built with more complex components. Maybe I got the number wrong there. Maybe it's 82 instead of 83. That's been updated. Let's press finish editing and our site has now been completely updated. No more mess, no more headache, no requirement for a client to be inside of the Framer editor, just simple, clean, quick updates. That's how easy it can be. Now, what this also means is that if I do want to lock things down inside of my actual Framer file, I can do that. I can come to every section that's inside of my different frames here and I can lock all of them just like that. So if my client does come in here and takes a look at the design, they can't actually destroy any of the layouts or any of the structure. They simply have to go out to the browser to make those content updates. This is going to alleviate a lot of headaches for clients that want to manage their own projects, their own websites, not have to depend on me and not even have to learn the software. It's just point and click. 
Well, that's it. That's everything you need to know about content editing in Framer. It's that simple. There's not a whole lot more explanation even required. Big thanks to Framer for listening to the community. This is one that we've wanted for a while. So I love that this is a tool that actually cares about us as the clients, as the customers, and what we actually think is important. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell so you know when more Framer and web design and development content come out, and we'll see you in the next one.